This is group 15, and we will be dissecting the Nintendo Wii Remote for the ENME 473-690 undergraduate project. Our team members are Andrew Montgomery, Ross Ives, Shenley Zhao, and Thamira Payagala. The Wii Remote has a total of 12 buttons on its ex external surface. They are the power button, directional pad, A button, B button, which is sometimes referred to as the bottom trigger, home button, plus button, minus button, and the one and two buttons. There are also four LEDs used to indicate the player number, sync status, and battery charge level. There are holes on the top surface designed for sound propagation for the speaker. To dissect the Wii Remote, you first must remove four tri-wing screws inside the battery compartment. Once the screws are removed, the plastic tabs on the two sides of the remote have to be disengaged by pushing them inward. After separating the housing pieces, all of the membranes for the buttons on the top surface are not visible. The piezoelectric speaker is held in place by the housing structure as well. The speaker leads make contact with two contact points on the top of the PCB during gameplay. The main PCB is positioned between the two main plastic pieces and held in place by the grooves at the corners. When turned over, the haptic motor used for abrasions can be seen below the small plastic platform. The membrane from the B button is also placed in this bottom plastic platform. The Rubicon 3300 microfarad capacitor rubber coating is cut away to reveal its information. Here you can see the PCB and the three main plastic pieces that make up the Wii Remote. We will now start by going over the main level 2 and level 3 components seen on the PCB. The top side of the PCB contains 7 buttons of the membrane switch type and 4 buttons of the micro switch type. Each of these micro switches are connected to the PCB by 4 surface mounted leads. The remote uses a 3 axis ADXL330 accelerometer that can measure up to 3 G's of acceleration at a sensitivity of 10%. It is used to track movements of the user's hand during gameplay. This plastic quad flat package is service mounted with 16 leads. The flash memory chip is used to store information for the Bluetooth controller in the Wii Remote. The thin shrink small outline package is surface mounted with 24 goal wing leads. The 10 bit analog to digital converter chip is used to convert analog signals from the accelerometer to digital signals to communicate with the Wii console. The plastic small outline package is surface mounted to the top of the PCB with 16 leads. There are also four LEDs near the end of the board which indicate player number, battery charge level, and sync status. They operate under 2.66 DC volts and are surface mounted to the PCB. Moving to the back side of the Wii PCB, we start with the Wiimote 6-pin connector. This FEMO port allows the remote to communicate bi-directionally with a compatible accessory, such as the Wii Numtruck. The port itself is mounted on the bottom of the PCB, and the 6 pins are connected to the PCB with through-hole connections. Next we see the 4-volt 3300 microfarad capacitor. This provides power in cases where batteries may become disconnected from the system momentarily, caused by the user swinging the remote aggressively. This level 2 component is connected to the PCB with through-hole PCB mounts and coated in a rubber-like material. Next to this capacitor is the sync button. This sync button is hidden under the battery cover and used to connect the controller to the Wii console. It's a miniature snap action switch and connected to the PCB with four through-hole PCB mounts. Next, the Wiimote utilizes a 128 kilobit electronically erasable programmable memory chip, which is attached to the PCB through eight Goldwing leads. This 
plastic small outline package chip is primarily used to store calibration constants and Mii data, which is data for the Mii channel and some games such as Wii Sports. At the center of the PCB is the Broadcom BCM2042 single chip Bluetooth controller with a fully integrated human interface device profile and full Bluetooth stack. This single monolithic bulk CMOS device is packaged as a fine pitched ball grid array. On board, the device has an 8051 processor and 8 kilobytes of non volatile flash memory for storing Bluetooth addresses and configuration data. Nintendo likely chose this device because of its low cost and low power consumption. The haptic motor, sometimes referred to as the rumble motor, is a linear resonant actuator which runs on AC signal. This actuator is connected to the PCB via two wires and sits off the PCB and is held in place under the B button. This allows the haptic feedback to be transferred directly to the plastic housing and therefore directly to the user's hand. Lastly, we have the IR camera at the front of the Wii controller. This optical sensor has a 128 by 96 monochrome camera and an image processing system which can track up to four moving objects simultaneously. A sensor bar comes with the Wii console and emits two clusters of five infrared lights. These lights are filtered through an infrared pass filter in front of the camera, filtering out all other light other than the two IR clusters. When the camera sees the two clusters at the bottom of its view, it knows that the cursor should be at the top of the screen. Likewise, when the camera sees the two clusters at the top of its view, it knows the cursor should be at the bottom of the screen. And the same idea for side-to-side -side motion. And when the remote is tilted, the angle of the IR clusters lets the Wii know what angle the cursor should be. Now for some of the common passives on the Wii Remote circuit board. Uh, surface mounted resistors are used on the PCB to help in controlling current that runs through the circuit. There are two types of capacitors that are used on the Wii Remote. Ceramic capacitors and an aluminum electrolytic capacitor. So the ceramic capacitors are used throughout the circuit and help to control the current. The aluminum capacitor, as previously stated, um, is used as a brief power supply when the uh, batteries disconnect. Two terminal diodes are the only type of diodes used on the Wii Remote PCB. These diodes help control the direction of current flow. A few inductors can be seen on the Wii Remote PCB. The inductor coils are made of copper wire and the function is to filter out electric signals. The PCB on the Wii Remote is a double-sided PCB, meaning there are two electric layers and a substrate filler layer between these two layers. The PCB layers consist of silkscreen, a solder mask, copper layer, and then an FR4 center. The silkscreen is used to add text and logos to the PCB. The solder mask layers insulate and protect the copper layer below it and gives the PCB color. The copper layer is used to transfer electrical signals. And the thick substrate layer in the middle is used to insulate the two copper layers from one another. The first level packaging refers to the interconnection between the chip and the encapsulant. This connection is important and takes into account the electrical properties, mechanical properties, and thermodynamic properties of the bond between the chip and encapsulant. In order to evaluate these connections, we did x-ray imaging of the chip, chips are of three chips, and we decapsulated one chip and took optical imaging of it. The AD converter and Bluetooth converter chips had similar wire bonds as both were ball and wedge wire bonds. The difference between the AD converter and Bluetooth controller was that the AD converter had less inputs and outputs due to its goal wing leads while the Bluetooth controller had more as it had a ball grid array. Due to this, the Bluetooth controller has more wire bonds than the AD converter. You can see on the left a picture of the uh, AD converter and on the right the Bluetooth controller. The accelerometer was slightly different to the other two chips. It still did use a ball grid or ball and wedge bond, but it seemed to have a standoff stitch for more mechanical protection. And this was likely added prior to terminating the second bond. Uh, this is likely due to the moving parts in the accelerometer uh, needing more or causing the wire bond to need more protection. But this is purely speculation and uh, there could have been a variety of different reasons why they chose to use, to add this to their manufacturing process. As I already stated, the microscope images were taken on the 128 kilobit serial bus. Uh, this 
m the lead frame for this uh, chip was made from a copper alloy. Uh, the this was probably done because the coefficient of thermal expansion is closer to filled epoxy resins compared to uh, the other main uh, material used, which is alloy 42. It also has a lower electrical resistivity, higher thermal conductivity, and is cheaper. So it's a lot better for, uh, has a lot better electrical properties and thermal properties compared to the other material. And on top of that, it's cheaper. You can see on the left a far, far out image of the lead frame and right a image of, enlarged image of the lead frame where you can actually see specific uh, details of the lead frame. The wire bonds on the 128 kilobit serial bus were made from gold. Um, due to this, it's likely that it was manufactured using thermosonic bonding process. Uh, the bonds were ball also you used the uh, were also connected using the ball wedge method. Um, you can see on the left there's a picture of the ball, and on the right there's a picture of the wedge connected to the encapsulant and the ball is connected to the uh, chip. Here comes the zero level packaging. Um, first is related with the definition. Zero level packaging means the interconnections on chip, including metallization, interlevel dielectric, and uh, passivation. Here we um, basically analyze on the target chip accelerometer ADX030 which is the QFP packaging. Since we do not have the capability to do this microscope uh, observation work, we searched online and found uh, one company um, called uh, Chipworks. Uh, they have uh, some investigative work towards this chip and uh, basically we, on these slides, we will use the results they provide in their technical report. And for the method of the zero level packaging, usually it is based on X-ray analysis and the decapsulation as well. Okay, um, here we can see from the picture the accelerometer has three axes and uh, the, it uh, suspended on four pedestals above the polysilicon substrate, which is surrounded by the system electronics. And uh, here, the first layer of the polysilicon, which is analyzed by the company, uh, they found that it is used to form transistors and the, the fixed plate of MEMS capacitor structure, which is basically along the X and the Y axes. However, for the second layer of the polysilicon, um, they are used to sense motion only along the Z axis. I will basically talk about the simulation. Uh, from the software flow therm. We choose 22 typical components in the front and the 15 typical components in the back, including all the IC chip, capacitors, resistors, connectors, LEDs, and uh, sensors. From the result of the uh, simulation, we can see the temperature range is uh, uh, around uh, is from 25 degrees C to 50 degrees C. The standard chip, which is Broadcom BCM2042, has the highest temperature, which arises on our attention and can be useful for our uh, thermal ma management in the redesign part. The experiment results here we use a DC power supply and set the current limit and the voltage um, value. The temperature of the circuit is around 37 degrees C, while the center chip can be up to 45 degrees C. The experiment has been um, run in 10 minutes in order to achieve the steady state, and uh, the result is in consistency with the simulation. The Wii Remote uses a simplistic infrared emitter and image sensor combination to determine dynamic motions of the remote. The accelerometer is only used to measure linear movements in the three dimensions and therefore the IR technology is implemented to track rotational tilting movements. This mess method, even though cost effective in design, introduces functionality challenges during usage in an environment with multiple sources of light, which can introduce IR interference to the system. Instead, the product can utilize a MEMS gyroscope 
to determine rotational movement, thereby allowing the remote controller to determine positioning in all six degrees of freedom. Some of the surface mounted chips in the Wii Remote PCB, like the EEPROM chip, the flash memory chip, and the AD data converter, were all attached to the board with gullwing wing leads. These leads take up significant amounts of circuit board space as compared to ball grid array types. The reduction in space is more evident in terms of overall surface area used by each chip rather than linear dimensions. In terms of thermal management, the center chip, the BCM2042, can be taken into consideration. Based on results of both simulation and experiment, the temperature of that chip is highest. We have two potential solutions. First, we can seek for a better, better thermal conductivity of the chip for example, use heat pipe and even thermal compounds to help transfer the heat from the surface to the, case of the, to the outside case. Second, considering the PCB layout, we can add copper pour area around the chip as much as we could. This helps dissipate the heat as well as reduce signal noise since the chip is a controller.